Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boxing fans around the world. Well, we got to wrap up. I, yeah, I was right. It was the uh, Quadras Rodriguez fight next, and boy, I got it wrong. Now, I suspected it could happen because it was a late replace, but I, I expected that Quadras was going to be able to do something with his fight, and he didn't get it done. Jesse Bam Rodriguez, he was able to pretty much put on a dominant display, an uh, unexpectedly dominant display against Carlos Quadras. Wins the title at, I believe, I'm pretty sure it's super flyweight. Unexpectedly, from my angle, it's not dismissing what Rodriguez. It's just Quadras is a very talented, skilled fighter. He's a veteran in the business. And so I expected that that experience would come into play. And unfortunately, what we saw was that Rodriguez was just too fast. And Quadras, for whatever reason, he was fighting kind of stupid. He was standing right in front of him. He wasn't really using his skill like we've seen him do in the past. So I don't really know if something was wrong with him or the late replace threw him off. It could simply be that Rodriguez is just that hungry and just went out there and got it done. Regardless, you got to give it up to Jesse Rodriguez. Again, I didn't rate him because he was a regional fighter prior to this. Not to dismiss him, not to think less of him. I thought just, hey, Quadras should be able to pull this out because of the skill and experience. That unfortunately did not happen. And we now have a new champion. So now we're just waiting on, of course, Keith, Once Upon a Time Thurman, and Mario Barrios. I'm watching that fight now. And the way it's going, I do have some thoughts on the fight. Of course, round eight has kind of debunked those thoughts a little bit because Keith's starting to screw up. But regardless, I do have some thoughts on that fight. I'm going to be back to cover that fight as soon as it wraps up. I suspect we're going to get some sort of resolution eh, probably about round 10. We're at round eight right now. Just finished round eight. I suspect round 10 is where we're going to see some sort of resolution, yay or nay. Hopefully it goes the way I'm, again, hearing it goes and that my prediction is wrong as it was wrong for uh, Jesse Rodriguez. I'm always hoping for the underdog. It's just if I see a significant level of skill and experience, I've always got to go the experience route, but I'm never going to underestimate underdogs and the underdogs seem to be pulling it off a couple of times very recently, especially in 2022. Um, with Jesse Rodriguez, though, that was completely out of left field. I, I think certain people saw it coming because people were talking about it and saying that he was being underrated and the bookies are underrating him. But I do think that I, here's my theory. Some people are saying, OK, Rodriguez has a shot, you know, with the big dogs and in the, in the, you know, the four at super flyweight. I, I understand why they say this. I don't think he's going to be able to pull off that same kind of spectacle against even Chocolatito. And I don't think Chocolatito is the best of them. I don't think he's going to do that Chocolatito. I certainly don't think he does that to Rung Vijay. Estrada, maybe, but I think Estrada would be smarter not to stand right in front of the dude. So it'd be some interesting fights for sure. But I do think that there's levels to it. And Quadras, I don't think he's washed, but I do think he didn't really try as hard as he should have. And he seemed to either, again, take the guy lightly or the late replace just threw him off. I'm not sure. Anyway, Give it up for Jesse Rodriguez. He was able to get that done. Comes the youngest champion as of right now in boxing.